Yeah, it's nice. It's nice and cool. You know, not, there's not a lot of people that use these things for cooling. But uh, when they're out of the system, they're actually quite nice. Especially with the, it's got this big plate on the back. How many people do you think uh, are rubbing their face on an Asus <laughs> GTX 780 Direct CU2 right about this moment? Um, zero. In this video, we're going to talk about how fast this is. In the other video, and if you haven't seen the other video, you need to watch that video first because in my opinion, that video is more important than this video. All of the 780s on the market are fast. It doesn't matter what brand. You slap a 780, uh, you know, slap any sticker on it, it's going to be freaking fast. This one's a little bit different, uh, so you need to watch the video on all the different technologies that go into this. We have a non-reference PCB, totally non-reference, 15 layers, um, really awesome cooling unit. The DirectCU2, there's a 10 millimeter heat pipe. That's a lot of dis dissipation. Copper uh, plate right on the um, the GPU. Digi plus power, 8 plus 2 phase design. So you need to watch that video to find out what's going on under the hood. Um, and, and why it's one of my favorites uh, that I've seen so far. I haven't seen a lot of the other 780s, so I can't uh, fairly compare it to the other ones, but it, yeah, it's nice. It has really good airflow. Surprisingly good airflow for as quiet as it is. Well, this fan is like a combination impeller blower. It's weird. Uh, and then the other one's a normal fan, so it doesn't create turbulence, but yeah, it really does a really good job of moving air around, pushing air out the back and also hitting the uh, PCB with a lot of air. So let's talk about how fast this is. Now, what we did is uh, we, we used a, um, a ridiculously fast uh, Intel 4770K. That's the Haswell CPU. We also tested this thing out with an i5, and um, the benchmark was pretty much identical. So For Bioshock. Yeah, in Bioshock, pretty much identical. Um, we, we decided to have a little bit of fun, so we grabbed an AMD 955, and we also used the uh, AMD A10 6800K, that's a Richland uh, CPU. And the reason we did this was because a lot of you guys out there don't have enough money to buy one of these today, and maybe you only have enough money to build like our console replacement rig, and you're gonna be going with an APU or a lower powered CPU like an AMD FX 6300. We wanted to test it with one of those just to see, you know, two or three years down the road, maybe you can get like a 1060 that'll be similar in performance to this. So this video will still be relevant then. See? <laughs> no! Suicide. Uh, oh, yeah, we don't boy. actually think anybody is crazy enough GPU aside. to buy a Richland and stick this in there. We're not saying that you should get a Richland and then just get this GPU and shove it in there. That's crazy. Don't do that. So this will kind of give us an idea of how maybe a Richland would be in a few years with a card that's about this fast. Just a really rough idea. So when you buy a Richland, you can know, hey, I can just add a GPU in a few years and see how it is. So... We're just going to jump right into the results and not make any opinions just yet. So let's take a look at Bioshock Infinite at 1080p. Um, 780 running on three different machines here. You can see um, we did the entire benchmark. Uh, it's Everything's at max, DirectX 11, depth of field turned on, all that stuff, all that fancy stuff. You guys can see the full settings at the website. This was with the benchmark. Now, um, you see Richland and uh, the 955 are actually doing better than the uh, 4770K with Bioshock. I want to note that Bioshock barely uses any CPU. When you look at our ADA report, it's like using somewhere between 15 and 30% typically, maybe a little bit more with the 955 and the uh, and the Richland. But why? It's kind of weird. I mean, it's well, it's, it's, there's that's a, a few little... dips in there as well. We, we do have some driver problems because these drivers uh, are like first-gen drivers for this. So there may be some driver issues. Well, it starts low, but it stays higher when the other ones go lower. Yeah, right in the beginning there. Toward the Welcome Center, it does stay higher. But then toward the end, once once we get outside and there's a lot of people and stuff going, you know, moving around, it's it's kind of strange. I'm wondering if it's using, uh, you know, like so it's it's barely using any of the power of the 4770K. So maybe it's like a couple of the cores are just going to sleep or something. I don't even know. Like <laughs> the 4770K lazy CPU syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. All right. Here's what happens. Uh, when we look at um, 1440p. Now, this is a totally different story at 1440p. Now, of course, here at the top, the first thing I want to note is that uh, SLI. We did some SLI and overclock because why not? You know, we had JJ's massive machine here, the water-cooled kit. Uh, it was in the Corsair 900D. We had that machine, so we put two of them in there, overclocked it to 4.8, and just went crazy. Yeah, the 4.8 on Haswell is the unicorn of CPUs. It really is. <laughs> it was it was a bit ridiculous, but I, I want to note that in SLI... 
the performance was like 90 to 95 percent better than just one graphics card. It was almost a perfect utilization of SLI. So and it's, it's been really a long efficient. time since we've seen that. So that's very impressive. So extremely efficient. I'm going to go ahead and delete this score so we can go in and look at the uh, non-SLI benchmarks. All right, here it's a little bit uh, different. The 4770K does not dip down like crazy, and it generally wins uh, toward the end. Everything is almost the same. But, um, I mean, really, the 955 and the Richland are keeping up most of the time. And uh, they, they do drop down to 30, but they never go below 30 at, at 1440p. So we've got some really old CPUs here that are doing a very good job. Um, I mean, it's all because this card is a, is a monster, but... Well, that those strange results at 1080p, we also replicated those results on an i7-920 with a 770 as well. So we feel pretty good about that. And they'll probably fix that with drivers, but 1440, of course, is going to be more CPU intensive than 1080. And so it, at 1440, things sort of evened out with the 4770K coming out ahead. Let's take a look at some different games. Uh, Counter-Strike Go. Now, on Counter-Strike Go, we tested it at 1080p, and we just maxed everything out because I wanted to test a Source Engine game. Um, but this is going to be sort of indicative of, of like any Source Engine game, like Black Mesa, um, you know, Half-Life 2, whatever. And uh, we only, in this one, we just tested the uh, the Richland and the 4770K. And at 1080p, the Richland pretty handily beat the uh, 4770K with the 780. It's kind of ridiculous. So these, these games that, I mean, games like this, they don't really require that much CPU power. But let's take a look at uh, 1440p before we make any full conclusions. And there you see the Richland falling behind. It just does not have the CPU power to compete. Uh, the overclocked SLI, of course, is way ahead, but but not by much. Um, you know, the SLI scaling on this one is not much. It's just like a few FPS faster than just one um, one of these 780s. So, all right, now we did those two games. Those two games don't rely on the CPU quite as much as some other games. Yep. Right, let's take a look at Crisis 3. We did not test Richland or the 955. They just really couldn't play. Well, we did, but the results weren't very interesting. Yeah, we can throw them on the website for you guys, but we haven't finished doing all the tests. We just did a couple tests, and we're like, this is terrible. It just really is terrible. It turns I mean, out Crisis 3 needs a fast CPU. Who knew? Yeah, it needs it needs everything. Crisis 3 just eats everything. We tested with and without filters, and as you can see, the SLI without filters just flies. And then SLI with filters, it's 59.52 with filters. Uh, versus 88.12 without filters, so decent, uh, decent, decent scaling there. That's on SLI. Yes, without SLI, we've got 46.52 with no filters at 1080p, and uh, 31.48 uh, with filters. So above 31, but it did dip below 30 a couple times there. Let's take a look at 1440. SLI, uh, no filters, 57.04, and uh, with the filters turned on, we had 37.12. So 1440p with one of these. Man, Crisis just destroys everything. It really does. It, it even destroys the 780. We think maybe that Crisis is not very optimized because honestly, this is crazy. Well, I mean, they've also got every every filter and thing that you can do to a graphics card. Turn everything on. Turn depth of field name. Just turn everything all the way up. That's what Crisis does. Like, hey, let's get the biggest textures. And I think they were, you know, kind of getting made fun of because Crisis 2 looked like a console game. Crisis 1, I thought, had better textures than Crisis 2. So they really had to do something about that, and they made Crisis 3, and there you have it. All right, so we tested a wide range of games there. Crisis 3 was really to show you how, um, you know, a CPU and GPU-intensive game would run. And then we had, uh, you know, a game like Counter-Strike Go, which is just an older game that um, Source Engine. And then Bioshock, which is a newer game, but it is just really optimized, and it relies on the GPU way more than the CPU. So we have... Three different types of games. If you guys want to see some more games like Natural Selection and Try, and you guys can check out our website. Uh, we have some benchmarks there. And if you want to see something ridiculous, we decided to take three 1440 displays and put them together and run two of these overclocked uh, with an overclocked 4.8 gigahertz Haswell CPU and see how that ran. So you can watch that video by clicking right here. We're going to be doing a lot of different benchmarks. Um, I, you know, I'm actually kind of uh, scared of charts. I don't like charts. I'm like, when it comes to all this benchmarking stuff, I start going cross-eyed, and I'm like, just is it how fast is it? Just tell me. Just give me a number on paper. So we do have some interns helping us out with all the different benchmarks. You know, we oversee them. I'm in the room. Um, we're going to have a lot of stuff going on, and, you know, we're going to do something a little bit different than what everybody else does because I want to know how this runs on different hardware. I want to know how, you know, like a card like the seven, uh, the 760 is going to run on, on, on different hardware because some of you guys are going to be buying a new system, but a lot of you guys may just be better off keeping your old motherboard and CPU and just adding a graphics card. So 
uh, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to see how a lot of the stuff runs on old and new hardware and then let you guys know. Um, Some of the stuff, too, is that you can nail down one or two settings in a game that will absolutely kill your frame rate on certain hardware configurations. Uh, for instance, in Trine, if you turn the filters up to extreme, it destroys your frame rate. It, like, cuts it in half. But if you just turn it down so that it's only running full scene anti-aliasing, your frame rate goes up by, like, 30, and it looks, to me about 95% the same as it does on extreme. So you lose like 5% of the visual quality and you gain like 30 to 40% performance. That's a pretty good deal. So that's something else we're going to try to do to help you guys out, especially people who just want to game, don't want to buy an entirely new system. Well, well you can probably do that by buying a graphics card. Just have to figure out which one to get uh, for your system and then also figure out when it's really time to upgrade, you know, how old of a system is still viable. And so, so you'll see benchmark results from us that or seem to be the same system, but are actually different settings. And the graphic settings, some of them don't really make much of a difference with frame rate at all, and other ones will cut your frame rate in half, which is really kind of interesting. So again, I guess we're doing things uh, differently. <laughs> <laughs> we seem to be those guys that do things differently, and and it kind of seems that we we seem to piss off a lot of the other guys out there that are making benchmarks because your benchmarks are not the same as mine. <laughs> well, it's it's interesting because the settings that affect like the i7-920 platform, are different than the settings that affect the 955 platform. So what we're going to need to do, because, well, the 920 is, is you've got the triple channel memory. We need to test out some socket 2011 stuff. And Asus was nice enough to send over one of their workstation motherboards, so we're going to do that and just see if the, uh, the quad channel RAM has anything to do with some of these benchmarks. I'm not sure if it will or not, because the games usually rely on the memory here, but maybe there's some stuff going on with the CPU in some of these games. That, and and the, you know, the memory is creating a bottleneck, so who knows? We'll also mention that if you were paying attention, there were a couple of frame dips in the Bioshock benchmark at 1080p with the 780. We actually ran that benchmark about eight times because we thought something weird was going on on different systems. Didn't you reinstall Windows at one point because we, you were we like... We completely reinstalled Windows. We thought it might be thermal throttling, but it wasn't thermal throttling. Um, it, it does seem to be somewhat affected by the driver version, but those stutters go away at 1440, so... All right, so that's our benchmark. You guys need to check out the ridiculous, uh, what, do, what do you call that? The Tri 40, 1440p, whatever we call that video. Yeah, the sideways 1440p monitors are amazing. You guys need to check out that video. So, so check that out and be sure to check out the video technology overview on this one and also the uh, 760 here. See you guys next time.